Okay, last time we worked on this character and we had him do some animation, like the sun went up, then it's a blue sky, and he grabbed his hat and took it off. Um, you can totally organize your workspace the way you want it to be. For example, if you don't want your uh, this part, projects here, you can like click and drag this over here and move it on this side. And if you don't want this here, you can move it to the left or to the bottom. I mean, you can totally move things around. You can even like take off things. Like if you don't want information, you could first of all undock it and then you can move it over here so you can see it more clearly, you know? And then if you don't want any more, done with it. And then if you click, if you want it back, you click on these arrows and then you can choose like options and choose to show that again. So definitely get your docking workspace area the way you want it to be. Uh, and then under workspace, you can save your workspace under uh, window workspace and then you can uh, don't have to remanage it every time um, what is an EPS okay yeah. so I know some of you guys are studying for your SAT so here we go uh, AI is to illustrator as AEP is to after yeah after effects so that's the file extension so if you see that file extension you know what that is um, now, if you put in video, now video is a very large file, right? So if you are importing video into After Effects, it only, uh, it doesn't import the video into your project. Otherwise, your project file would be huge. Instead, it only does the path or the link. Similar to like Windows uh, Movie Maker, you know how you have to export the project. Like if you copy the project and then bring it in here, I can't open it because you have to have the original files. But if they're graphic files like Illustrator or things like that, those files are imported in, but not video. Um, you can only open one project at a time, so keep that in consideration. But you can open multiple what? Composition. Yeah, compositions. Okay, and remember, um, these are compositions. So in your story, you would have like your uh, title page, and then here you would have your author page, and then dedication page, and background, and you'll have multiples of these. And then when you're done with each one, you'll export them out as an AVI or movie file, and then you will put them all together into one uh, big story. So um, You can use browsing the bridge. bridge Adobe Bridge is, usually comes with the program. Uh, it allows you to select files better. Um, let me go down to... Uh, so, oh, layers. Let me, let's talk about our Composition for a minute because composition is really important. Uh, so remember, if you if you want to hide something, so let's say we want to hide and not look at our lake background, we click on the eye right here, right? So the eye is there, and then let's say um, let's say you want to like select a certain part of your thing to work on. So what I'm going to do is, you see this right here, this little dot? I'm going to select the dot on the shirt. And you'll notice when you do that, only the shirt uh, is shown. So that's really helpful because then you can like uh, get exact ways of moving things if you need to do that way. Um, you notice these tag colors? These can, ch you can change your and color coordinate your colors based on what kind of objects or layers they are. So it helps organize things. Uh, and notice they're numbered 1 through 12. And so, notice what's layer selected right now? Left foot. 5, right? It's layer number 5. Now, watch the mouse. What's layer now? Two. How did I get there? See, my mouse is stationary in the bottom this left. Yeah, your keypad. All you have to do is press 8. Here's 11. Okay, 12. Yeah. So remember, I told you that. People, your right hand is always mad at you because you do everything with your right hand and your left hand feels lonely. So put your left hand to work and let them do the numbers. Also, if you want to like, let's say you're at shirt and you want to go up to right arm. Instead of using your mouse, you hit command what? Command up. Command up goes up, command down goes down. So it's a really easy way of navigating that. Uh, and you remember the shy guy, right? And again, this is how you can do the colors, right? Changing the colors to 
uh, if you want. Remember the shy guy? This shy guy? If you want to select only certain ones, see this is shy guy and these are not. And then if I click on shy guy right here, only the shy guys are shown. Okay? Um, okay, so let's go back to view all the guys, no shy guys. And so notice shy guys, two layers are selected, but I can see everything like visually on my palette. Um, what do these look like? From what? Remember Photoshop and Illustrator? You can do like drop shadows and um, like opacity, like multiply. Remember this one? Adjusting the layers. So you can do all that fun stuff right in here if you want to use that. And then here's the parent items. So Remember, in Illustrator, you have one folder, and you can put other layers inside a folder. So that's like how the parent works. Like you, you can put children inside the parent and make them like attached. So I could, I could attach these two together. So, um, and you can experiment with these other ones, but those are the main ones that we use. So really try to use those. Um, oh, um, one thing that we use a lot in animation is what? Yeah, moving or transform, right? Now, you remember we learned yesterday five ways to transform our object? What were they? Well, one, it's probably hard to remember. That's why we remember it by an acronym. Does anyone know what the acronym is? Well, if you go to our lesson today, Basics 2, it's traps. Okay, traps. So, what do you think T stands for? Opacity. Opacity. R, what does R stand for? Rotation. A. Anger point. P. Position. And S is scale. Okay, so S is scale. So again, you can easily get to those and then you can make the adjustments right from there for the, the traps. Um, let's say you wanted to do the same thing to like um, the, the same, let's see. Let's say we have two objects like this and you want to uh, do the same action. You can select both of them and then let's say we want to do the, how do you move? What's that one? P, yes, Unjun's right, position. Okay, so then I can start my stopwatch. I can move it over here, and then I can move my positions over, and they move together. Okay, so now when I go over here and play it, it moves together. Oh, oh cool. So that. So that's very important because uh, if you have like multiple body parts, like your arms, and they're attached and you want to move them up and down, you'll want to do that. Now, why did it move so slowly? Because it's just a timer. Really yeah, slow. six seconds, one, two, three. That's a long time. I should have only done one second. So how do I change it? I can just draw, a, like a select it, select both of them, and then just move them. So maybe more like that. So now when I play it, it's really fast, it looks faster. Now, if I only have like maybe four seconds of time, do I need all this stuff out here? No. no. So what I want to do is move my timer in, maybe to four seconds so it's more zoomed in. Well, basically all this is is like to view. So I'm going to view it a little bit like, maybe like that to four seconds. Do you guys know what this is? This is called a marker. A marker is a good, uh, it doesn't do anything except just provides a place for you to mark a place so you know, okay, when it gets to that, I want to do something. And you can name your marker. If you double click, and let's say you want this to be like smile. So this tells you that when it gets to this marker, you want to smile. So this can help remind you of things. 